my name is Katarina Fabricius and I'm a co-reficologist at the Australian Institute of Marine Science. I've grown up in Munich in Germany but came to Australia in 1988 to start studying basically how the Great Barrier Reef is responding to pressures induced by human activities. My initial research was very much on the effects of water quality on the coral reefs. So I've been looking at the effects of terrestrial runoff, the loss of nutrients and sediments to the reef, and how that changes the ecology and the physiology of coral reef organisms up and down the Great Barrier Reef. So coral reefs are the most biodiverse marine systems in the world. Um, there are probably a million species of um, animals and plants living on coral reefs. We don't know exactly the number. A lot of species are still undescribed. And coral reefs are an ecosystem that are formed by living animals, the corals. So they are forming the habitat for all those reef-associated organisms like crabs and shrimps and starfish and uh, prawns and, and sea urchins and so on. So if the corals are stressed or um, disturbed in any, any way, then the habitat for all of those plants and animals disappears or it gets destroyed or degraded. You've got to keep in mind the Great Barrier Reef is as big as the whole of Italy. So it's a very large system and understanding what is going on is, is incredibly complex. After doing work on water quality, I moved more and more into studying the effects of climate change and ocean acidification on coral reefs. And now, after 25 years of research, basically we are very much interested in, in the cumulative impacts on, um, on the reef from water quality, climate change and ocean acidification at the same time. Because the reefs are not just exposed to one type of pressure, but to a multitude of pressures. So what we are doing is um, we are trying to get as much robust scientific information as possible to inform policymakers and the public of how reefs are faring today and how they will be faring in 20 and 50 years time. Um, for example, we have analyzed the um, existing long-term monitoring data from the Great Barrier Reef and for the first time have shown that coral cover on the Great Barrier Reef is now only half of what it was 27 to 30 years ago. So coral cover average over the whole Great Barrier Reef has been continuously declining to now an average of only 13% coral cover. That's from a baseline of 27% um, about 30 years ago. And that's only when we started monitoring. We don't know how it would have been um, like 30 or 50 years ago when human pressure started to build it up. We are also looking at the effects of water quality on biodiversity issues, on the balance between reef accretion and erosion. And what we're finding is that um, biodiversity and reef build up are very much suffering under poor water quality. And that is complementing the pressures that are coming onto the reef now through climate change, from coral bleaching and from ocean acidification. So uh, right now we've got another um, large bleaching event happening uh, and I will go out to sea next week to survey to, to what extent reefs are indeed affected by the, by the bleaching. But we had a big bleaching event in last year in 2016 and before that we had massive bleaching events in 2002 and 1998. So the frequency of these mass mortality events is increasing in, at the same time the intensity of tropical storms is, um, is getting greater also causing massive coral damage and the nutrients and sediments running from the land into the ocean are causing outbreaks for, by coral re eating starfish called crown of thorn starfish or acanthaster planki and they're further contributing to killing corals. So the reef is under immense pressure from all sorts of different types of um, human activities and all we can hope at this stage is to really try to reduce the 
runoff of sediments and nutrients into the Great Barrier Reef to allow the reef maximum capacity to recover and also obviously um, cut greenhouse gas emissions as much, much as possible and as quickly as possible to give the reef a fighting chance to continue existing as beautiful as it is today um, into 50 and 100 years, years time. So uh, coral reefs are incredibly important for um, ecological reasons because they are habitat for so many species but for a nation, they are also very um, important for, from an economic point of view. The Great Barrier Reef earns to the Australian economy every year $6 billion in tourism income. And having a healthy coral reef means um, visitors still continue to come to Australia, spend tourism dollars and um, in order to have this once in a lifetime experience to see a beautiful coral reef, which for me is one of the most amazing uh, experiences a person can have. It's just even after having dived 3,000 times or so on the reef, um, it is still breathtaking to go down and see all these fish and corals and sea fans and all these beautiful colorful things in all their diversity. And it is um, something I wish our children and grandchildren will be able to continue to see. So we really have a moral and um, obligation to look after coral reefs so um, they will continue to exist in the future.